Yeah, I know that everybody worries now and again, and people with Asperger's syndrome are no exception. But there are some outliers, there are some places, some uh, some areas of their life where Aspies just don't seem to have the worries that neurotypical people do. And that's one of the positive things, you know, about having Asperger's syndrome. Let's take a look at six of these. Number one is people with Asperger's syndrome who really don't worry quite as much about what other people think of them. Now, I think that may have something to do with the fact that those of us with Asperger's syndrome really are not in the mainstream of society. That is of social climbing, of socialization. we just not part of it. We never have been. Now, maybe when we were kids, maybe even into high school, we would desperately try to be a part of the part of the crowd, you know, part of the herd, part of the dog pack, whatever you want to call it. But uh, yeah, it, it may have taken some time, but finally we figured it out that uh, we're just not a part. We are a part. We are set apart. We're just a little bit different. I like to use the uh, illustration of taking a drop of oil and putting it in a bucket of water. Now you're in the water, obviously, but you're not part of it. You're just totally different because uh, there's something about us that's a little bit, a uh, little bit, not quite the same as as water, so we're by ourselves. That's okay. In my opinion, that's not a problem. Some people with Asperger's syndrome, of course, find it challenging, but others learn that um, who cares? We're not a part of them. We're just something unto ourselves, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But there are some things that are necessarily right with that, and we're not as influenced by the opinions of others. We just don't care what they think about us, at least not to the extent that neurotypical people think about each other. Because neurotypicals seem to have this uh, social climbing status thing, and sometimes they even formalize it. I don't know if they still do this or not, but uh, there was a time uh, in history when the newspapers would have a social column. And they would keep track of who is who in the social climate of whatever city or area they happen to be. And that was real important to people. And I guess it still is to some extent. But for people with Asperger's syndrome, sorry, we're just not a part of that. We're not really worried. Whether we're at the top of the heap, bottom of the heap, we're not even in the heap. We, we, we have nothing to do with that. Number two is when it comes to, and this is just uh, a reiteration or a restating of what we just said, and that is social climbing in the sense of competition. So when you get a group of people together, they don't often even think of it uh, in terms of cognitively, where they're focused on the fact that they are in a competition with other people to see who is at the top of the social spectrum. But people with Asperger's syndrome, we're not a part of any of that. So social climbing is not something that we care about. And the competition, we're not competing. We're not in the competition. Now, we can sit back and watch for sport. Other people compete. It's kind of like uh, going to a race, you know, watching the Indy 500. And you're watching these guys ride or drive around the track 200 miles an hour, however fast they're going, and, well, good for them. I'm not going to drive around the track 200 miles an hour, but if you want to, yeah, I'll sit back and watch it. That's kind of what it's like to be a pe person with Asperger's syndrome and watching the competition among neurotypicals. That's something that they do, and if they want to do it, we don't care. If they have fun doing it, we don't care. Uh, just not something that we are part of. We're not psychologically, neurologically comprised of the components that causes us or even compels us to do that. So if you don't mind, we're just going to sit that out, and we're not going to worry about it. Number three is internal conflicts that are prompted by or caused by social pressure. So if you're part of this social entity, which virtually every neurotypical person is, part of a social entity, because we're not a part of it, the conflicts that go along with that, something that um, just not, not native to us. Now, so I know a lot of neuro, neurotypical people who are really not into social climbing. I don't mean to say that everybody is intensely focused on being at the top of the heap because they're not, but a lot of them are. And a lot of people get their feelings hurt, they get wounded, they have these conflicts based upon nothing more than somebody feels snubbed or somebody feels that they're not quite given the uh, social status that they really deserve. It's kind of like getting passed over uh, 
passed over a promotion at work only as a social promotion. And it's informal. I mean, nobody makes a decision. You know, it just, it just happens. We don't quite understand that, but people with Asperger's syndrome, once they get out of that stage, usually past the age of 25, that is not, uh, that's not a serious consideration for us at all. I know, there's always exceptions. And uh, people with Asperger's syndrome are, after all, people, and we're not totally 100% different. It's not night and day, white and black. It's not that different, but there is a difference. And so we say, number three, that we're just not uh, worried about these internal conflicts that we feel because we've been left out, because uh, we've always been left out. I mean, this is normal for us. And uh, many of us, as we mature, we discover that, you know, it's really not a bad thing. And being left out, sometimes, yeah, there are some negative ramifications. Like you may not have the social contacts that get you advanced in life, like a better job or maybe that uh, maybe that tip on, uh, on some investment. We may miss out on some of that, but we also miss out on some of the bad advice, too. We also miss out on some of the negative components of that, so it's kind of a wash. So uh, number four is one thing we don't worry about is conversation or acceptance. Have you ever been left out of a conversation? Very annoying. Now, when I was a student uh, studying um, psychology in college, I came across a study once that um, noticed that if you had three people in a conversation and two of the people intentionally left out a third person, that third person became very stressed, became very frustrated. And they've even done psychological tests on this, where you would have uh, three people and two of the people would be instructed to ignore the third person on purpose just to see what their reaction was. And the person, that person would feel slighted, would feel hurt. And I saw a, a report on one study where the other two people who were snubbing the third person, they weren't people at all. They were just computer programs. Uh, they were just pre-programmed to do this at a particular time. And still, that third person not realizing that he or she wasn't even dealing with other people, well, they felt kind of wounded. They felt kind of hurt. And uh, neurotypical people, they worry about that. It's, it's, it's very important to them to be accepted. Now, I'm not saying that people with Asperger's syndrome don't want to be accepted too, but what I'm saying is we don't fret over it quite like other people. Maybe we fret a little bit. Maybe we're a little bit worried about it. We know some of the ramifications are not possible, uh, not uh, not always available to us, but still, it's not something that we're going to stay up all night and worry about what if so-and-so doesn't accept me? What about that conversation where I got left out of yesterday? No big deal. Uh, you know, we've never been a part of the conversation, so why would we expect anything to be any, any different yesterday or today or tomorrow? It's not going to change. And guess what? You guys, you neurotypicals, want to worry about that stuff? Go ahead. We understand. That's just normal. But if it's all the same to you, we're not going to worry about it for ourselves. Number five is this. When it comes to things like uh, just uh, thinking and uh, studying, that's not necessarily something that people with Asperger's sy uh, syndrome invest a lot of time worrying about about. Uh, we are natural thinkers. At least every person with Asperger's syndrome I have met is uh, tends to be highly focused, usually on a specific topic, maybe two or three topics going at once. But uh, every person with Asperger's syndrome that I've ever encountered, and I've not encountered all of them, obviously, because there's millions of them, but, uh, you know, they, they, um, they're thinkers. And if you are thinking something different from what they're thinking, that doesn't seem to bother them quite as much as it would neurotypicals. And again, it's not that we're not bothered by it, but we're just not overly concerned. We don't worry about it quite that much. Now, we live in a world, well, everyone lives in a world, and everyone always has lived in a world of diverse opinions, diverse political views, diverse opinions on which sports team is the best, diverse, uh, diverse opinions on what style of clothing is preferred, diverse opinions over taste in music, diverse opinions over social programs, politics. We just, uh, we think differently, and that's the way humans are. We have different ideas. We all have different thoughts. Now, something that I've noticed about neurotypical people that bothers me immensely and makes me, makes me ever so grateful 
that I'm autistic is it seems that people with um I was going to say with um neurotypical syndrome can I say that they tend to get really upset if somebody doesn't agree with them and when you stop and think about it they must be upset a lot because you know eight billion people aren't going to agree with you all the time on everything so you're always in a state of disagreement but the thing that bothers me really the most is with neurotypical people, and I'm not saying that um, that the people with Asperger's syndrome are not exempt to this, exempt to this. But I notice that neurotypical people tend to sometimes flat out hate people because they disagree with them. Now you may have gone back in history and read maybe I don't know during the Reformation era where they would burn people at the stake. I mean, literally burn people alive because they disagreed with them over some religious point of view. Now, sometimes it wasn't that severe. Sometimes they would not burn them alive. Sometimes they just chopped their head off. But they disagreed, so they would hate people because they disagreed with them. And I've seen people do that, not just in religion, but uh, I've seen people get mad at other people because they disagreed with them over a diet. Or they would get mad at them because they disagreed with them over a political opinion. And they won't talk to those people, have nothing to do with them because, well, they are they're just blocking them out of their lives. And yeah, religious people do that too. They call it shunning. Doesn't make any sense. You hate somebody because they disagree with you? Does that make sense to you? You know, I, I've got better things to do than worry about if someone disagrees with me. I really don't care. You know, if my favorite color is earth tones and you like pink and green, which I guess could be considered earth tones if you like daisies or whatever, but um, I just don't care. I really don't care. If you wouldn't have a weird hairstyle by my opinion, that means, well, my hairstyle must be weird by your opinion. Who cares? That is not something we worry about. So one of the advantages, again, my opinion, person with Asperger's syndrome, is one of the advantages is we don't worry about these things that other people think about. They, they delve into some things and study them immensely, intently rather. They came up, they come up with uh, these conclusions that who cares? You know, these two people disagree. I'm going to move on. I'm not going to worry about that. Number six is Aspies tend not to worry so much because they tend to be honest and they are focused on being identified with honesty. And that's just a matter of fact. Now, again, always there are exceptions. But uh, I know people with Asperger's syndrome who may not be very honest. But by and large, there's just something about those sets of traits, something about that personality that compels people who are autistic, who have uh, Asperger's syndrome, to be extraordinarily honest. They don't like to lie. They don't like to cheat. They like to pay their bills on time whenever they can, if they can hold down a job. You know what I'm talking about? But they tend to be very honest, and because of that, they're not particularly worried a whole lot if somebody is uh, dishonest because they know what right and wrong is. So they're just not frustrated over that nearly as much. Identity acceptance, uh, we know who we are. We're not going to worry about it. We're not frustrated over it. And I've said this before a couple times, but uh, yes, there are exceptions. And yes, there are people with Asperger's syndrome who do worry about these things. That takes us to number seven. We don't worry about being validated. We don't worry so much about being alone. All right. It, it doesn't bother me at all to go into a restaurant all by myself. In fact, I kind of like going by myself. I like going to a restaurant with my wife, maybe one or two other people have a conversation, but go by myself. I'm okay with that too. And I can focus on uh, eating or whatever my thoughts happen to be, or I get on my cell phone and look at if I have a message or whatever. I'm perfectly okay with that. Other people may kind of turn around and look at you like, what's wrong with this guy? Well, what's wrong with me is I'm paying half the bill that everyone else is paying because it's just me. I don't have to pay the big tip that everyone else is paying because I'm just paying for me. I'm perfectly okay. If it's good food, why do you eat? You eat to have the food. So I'm not going to worry about 
being validated by being seen with other people. It's almost like if you if you're not in a crowd, if you're not surrounded by other people. And if you if you are an individual with Asperger's syndrome, tell me whether or not you find this to be true. You really don't need to be around other people to have a sense of worth. You don't need to be validated by having other people in close proximity all the time. It's perfectly okay to be alone. And you are not less of a human. You're not less of a person. You don't have less value simply because you are by yourself. Take a look at those two rectangles on the screen. If you would like to... Uh, Keep this conversation going. All you got to do is click one of those two rectangles and we'll keep talking. But if not, thanks for stopping by and we'll see you all next time.